Now that we've read this passage, let's see if we can answer the question. So the first question, the stance Jordan takes in the passage is best described as that of an idealist setting forth principles. Uh, that seems actually not, not too bad. She talks about uh, that it's, it's, it's actually the role of the Congress to be the inquisitors, the role to kind of uh, 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 in, impeach the president, but sets, sets some principles when it's appropriate and when it's not. It shouldn't be for petty reasons. It shouldn't be for party reasons. It shouldn't be just because the president, the Congress thinks the president did a bad job. It should be for, for major offenses, gross crimes and misdemeanors. So uh, that actually seems pretty good. Let's see these other ones. An advocate seeking a compromise position. Uh, there was nothing about this, this speech that seemed like a compromise. She seemed like she was stating some principles uh, in, a fairly, in a fairly strong way. An observer striving for neutrality. There is an aspect where she kind of says, like, look, this shouldn't be about partisan uh, bickering or, or, or about pettiness. So there is an element of, and, and she wants to be solemn, so she definitely wants to be uh, a, a neutral in, in that she wants to take it seriously. But she also says, I mean, this is her first line, today I am an inquisitor. You know, this is the person, these are the people who are, who are kind of, who are investigating and, 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 and might be accusing someone. And she also says, and I am not going to sit here and be an idle spectator. That's what an observer is. An observer would be a, an idle spectator. She's not doing that. She's taking action. She is an inquisitor. So I think because she's being so active, I think, and, and frankly, idealist, I think this first this first A is a better choice. C is, C, you know, I had to think about it for a second, but, but A feels better. A scholar researching a historical controversy? No, she's, she's, in, she's in it right now, and she, she's not a scholar. She's, she's an active participant in, in the events, and it's not a historical event. It's happening as she's speaking. Let's go to the next question. The main rhetorical effect of the series of three phases of three phrases in lines five through six, the diminution, the subversion, the destruction is to, so this is here, and I am not going to sit here and be an idle spectator to the diminution, the subversion, the destruction of the Constitution. So she, she's not messing around. Convey with increasing intensity the seriousness of the threat Jordan sees to the Constitution. That looks pretty good. She's saying, I'm not going to sit here and be an idle spectator to the diminution, the subversion, the destruction of the Constitution. So that seems like she's, she's, she wants to communicate the intensity, the seriousness that she sees the threat to the Constitution. Clarify that Jordan believes the, Consti the Constitution was first weakened and sabotaged and broken. No, she's, she's just saying she doesn't want to be a spectator to that happening. She's not saying that it necessarily already already happened indicating indicate that jordan thinks the constitution is prone to failure in three distinct ways no no not at all in fact later on she she talks about how i mean she says my faith not later on actually right before that my faith in the constitution is whole it is complete it is total so she doesn't think that it's prone to failure Propose a three-part agenda for rescuing the Constitution from the current crisis. No, she doesn't start breaking off and like, step one, do this. Step two, do this. So I think it is the, the increasing intensity, convey with increasing intensity the seriousness of the threat she sees to the Constitution. As used in line 34, channeled most nearly means, so line 34, we saw it right over here, the nature of impeachment, a narrowly challenged exception to the separation of powers maxim. So a narrowly channeled exception. So impeachment, it's this, it's this, it's this kind of a, a very limited exception, narrowly channeled, that allows one branch of government to essentially uh, accuse or potentially eventually remove or, or start the process to remove uh, the president. So, and it's narrowly, it's, it's constrained. And, and so over here, not worn, it's, it's not a, it's, you know, it's not something that's actually done a lot. So it's definitely not going to be kind of worn out or anything like that. Sent, a narrowly sent exception. No, a narrowly constrained exception to the separations of powers. That sounds right. Narrowly siphoned exception to the no. That's that seems that seems that seems strange. She's talking about look. There's a there's there's some. It's a very it's a narrowly constrained exception. It's a it's to to when one branch of government can 
can have a deep direct impact on another and potentially begin the proceedings to remove or accuse another, uh, in this case, the, the president. Let's read the next one. In lines 45 to 49, prosecution sent. So this is 45 to 49. So it's right here. Prosecutions of impeachment will seldom fail to agitate the passions of the whole community, said Hamilton in the Federalist Papers, number 65. We divide into parties more or less friendly or inimical, or inimical to the accused. I do not mean political parties in that sense. So this is just saying, hey, look, when you have an impeachment proceeding, people are going to get passionate about it. Some people are going to be sympathetic to the accuser. Some people are going to be sympathetic to the accused. But it should not be along party lines. So let's see. In lines 45, what is the most likely reason Jordan draws a distinction between two types of parties? to counter the suggestion that impeachment is or should be about partisan politics. And I think that's right. You can have two groups of people, some who are, who are on one side or the other, but it should not be along party lines. That's where, why she says, I do not mean political parties in that sense. To disagree with Hamilton's claim that impeachment pr proceedings excite passions? No, they clearly do. To contend that Hamilton was too timid in his support for the concept of impeachment? No. To argue that impeachment cases are decided more on the basis of politics than on justice? No, and she's actually arguing they need to be. They necessarily need to be based on justice, and they need to transcend party politics. Which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous question? So remember, in the answer to the previous question, we're saying, look, this is where she's starting to say that impeachment should not be the, the, that impeachment should not be about partisan politics. She's countering the suggestion that impeachment should be about partisan politics. So which of these lines give us further evidence? So line six, 13 to 16, that's up here. Line, And that's unlikely to be it because we were already down in the passage and now to give further evidence of that to go dump up. But let's see. It is wrong, I, I suggest. It is a misreading of the Constitution for any member to he here to assert that for a member to vote for an article of impeachment means that the member must be convinced that the president should remove from office. No, that's not saying that this should transcend party lines. Lines 20 to 22. Lines 20 to 22. The division between the two branches of the legislature, the House and Senate, assigning to the one the right to accuse and to the other the right to judge, the framers of this Constitution were very astute. No, this just talks about that, hey, look, the framers of the Constitution, they knew what they were doing by separating, by, by allowing one branch to accuse and one branch to judge. They're not talking about, she's not talking about party politics here or the need to transcend them. Lines 50 to 53. The drawing of political lines goes to the motivation behind impeachment, but impeachment must proceed within the confines of the constitutional term high crimes and misdemeanors. So this is this is an interesting one. She's kind of saying, look, you know, political lines can help can help motivate uh, uh, some of the impeachment, but impeachment pr must proceed within the confines of high crimes and misdemeanors. It needs to go beyond. So uh, this one is uh, this one is interesting. Let's see choice D. Choice D is line sixty to sixty three. Common sense would be revolted if we engaged upon this process for petty reasons. Or we actually when you start at Congress, though. Congress has a lot to do. Appropriations, so it goes all the way to, it, she's, so the ones, the line from Congress to transportation, she's just citing all of the things that Congress has to do. If they used, if it was these two lines, common sense would be revolted if we engaged upon this process for petty reasons. That might allude a little bit to, to the, the notion to transcend party politics. But the one, you know, this, this one right over here, this just lists kind of the other things that Congress has to do that, you know, shouldn't get caught up in petty things. Line 50 to 53 directly addresses the notion of political lines and but the, the fact that or the need for impeachment to proceed within the confines of high crimes and misdemeanors. So to kind of go beyond that it should not be politically based. So I would go with C.